Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Cannes Lions 2014. Now, few would disagree with the notion that the rise of the information technology era has triggered profound changes in our culture, but change is a two-way street. And as technology has become more enmeshed in contemporary culture, so too we find that culture has become a key driver of the technological process. Today, the marketing agency Translation presents a panel of some of the world's foremost authorities on consumer adoption, arbiters of what's in and what's out across the fields of business, marketing, technology and entertainment. I'm pleased to, to introduce our moderator, Stephanie Rule, who's the editor-at-large for Bloomberg News and co-host of Bloomberg Television's Market Makers. Steve Stout, the founder and chief executive of Translation and author of The Tanning of America. Ben Horowitz, co-founder of Andreessen Horowitz, a venture capital firm that has helped launch game-changing companies like Facebook, Twitter, Skype and Airbnb. And the author of The Hard Thing About Hard Things and 21 Time Grammy Award winner, Kanye West. So much for being here. Thank you, gentlemen. Technology, culture, consumer adoption, there is no better trio. Ben, when we think about you're an inventor, you're an innovator, you're a pioneer in technology. Kanye, you're a human brand, an artist whose cultural impact right now seems like it has no bounds. And Steve, you are the man who from Mickey D's to Jay-Z is threading the needle that is weaving these two together. So Steve, I want to start with you. Help us understand this sea change in technology, how consumers have this voice. If you think about technology back in the day, it was created for governments, for businesses. Now, it's hip hop stars, it's YouTube sensations dictating the biggest deals. Yeah, I just think that, you know, um... You know, you've seen over the last uh, 10 years, 15 years, the, the usability of technology and uh, just the actual, the interface of it worked really well for consumers. And it allowed people to, uh, instead of being scared of it, use it and apply it to daily life and make their lives easier. And from democratizing entertainment, uh, to what it did to the music business and what YouTube does and to what iTunes did, you're starting to realize that you know, technology plays a very important role in everyday life. And everyday life, and, uh, and, and, and these cultural manufacturers uh, play an important role in making technology work. And how these things come together is that intersection that we all work on bridging daily. And you were early to see this. When you look at traditional technology, it didn't seem like Bill Gates was connected to the consumer. Young people now, they don't know what IBM does. They don't connect with HP. How did you see this so early? Well, it's interesting, um, right, the first computer had one customer, the US government, and then uh, the CEO of IBM famously said, the total market for computers worldwide is five. <laughs> and they're like, that's how many we're going to sell. And, and it just evolved as things got uh, cheaper and broader, um, and technology does that. It, it kind of democratizes the products and drives them down. And now uh, everybody, even you know, people in the developing world, have a computer more powerful than the five that Thomas Watson thought would get sold. Um, and you know, just having been in it for many years, since the 80s and the beginning days of the internet, uh, you could see where it was going. And then the real turning point um, for a company that stopped selling technology to technology companies uh, was a company that I was at called Netscape, which sort of uh, consumerized the internet. And we dealt with the very early kind of issues that you're talking about, like, oh, OK, now regular people are using these products. We're not selling them to a computer manufacturer. 
Kanye, you said to the New York Times, you could be to culture what Steve Jobs has been to the internet in terms of music, fashion, art. How do you connect them all? Well, I mean, Steve Jobs, as everyone knows, is like my biggest influence. And just seeing the way that he fought to make things easier for people. And there's, you know, after he passed, uh, a lot of people here saw these, like, uh, these tweets that I sent out where I just made it my life's mission to do what he did inside of that company to take my position as, you know, being visual and influential to help. Um, I don't want to say these really big, over-the-top statements that end up getting quoted like in the wrong way. We appreciate that. We appreciate that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I, I dream to uh, help raise the, raise the palate, I mean, raise the taste level of, um, of a generation, of a, and, uh, and also be involved with the production and, you know, distribution and advertising of, you know, providing that, that thing that everyone's begging for whether it's like making sure, you know, we took the, the labels off the water because you know it's water. You know, I call Spike Jones, who's here with me today, after I saw her and I said, it's a scene where this owl is coming up behind Joaquin. And, I, and it reminded me of a, a film that we shot and um, that we showed here in Cannes a couple years ago. And I said, what did, you, what did you mean by that? He's like, this is my take on advertising in the future, not having brands. And you're just understanding what it is, like a, a Guy Bourdain photo or a Helmut Lang photo that you know it, and you don't have to put something by it. Or the fact that you know, with smartphones, you can just hold your phone up and know what that billboard is. And uh, it's like a Tumblr generation. And I said, these kids are like saying these things back to back, these certain color palettes back to back. Uh, uh, shapes that they want back to back, and it doesn't have to deal with big branding. And I was at like this clothing, uh, this fashion house, this like older fashion house, and this guy was telling me how you wouldn't sell T-shirts unless they had words on them. And I said, well, now Where's it's the like, beef? yeah, you know, like it just anything. And I said, now people are more less about the brands and the brands wearing them, but more about you know self, you know, confidence and how the brands can assist them, and and that's what's similar to what Steve was doing with tech. And that's the reason why I make those comparisons to say that, you know, this is my goal in, in lifestyle and everyday life to change the idea of what luxury, because time is the only, time is the only luxury. It's not this, these, you know, all these brands that we just drove by that are somehow selling our esteem back to us through association, you know. Are consumers more powerful today than ever because of technology, because of smartphones and iPads and the evolution of news and social media? We don't have to just take what's delivered to us. We have more power than ever. I, w I would say absolutely because it's clear. I mean, consumers are making brands overnight now. There, there were time when you know brands could force themselves on you because there wasn't 